Welcome to Conic Sections, Identification and Eccentricity. In this video, we learn to look at the equation of a conic section and identify which type of conic section it represents. We also learn about the eccentricity of conic sections. Starting from an equation, to identify which type of conic section the equation represents, look for the terms that involve squares of the variables. If the equation does not have a square on either variable, the graph is a line. If the equation has a square on one variable, but not the other, the graph is a parabola. If the equation has squares on both x and y, then the graph is a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. A circle can be considered a special case of an ellipse in the same way that a square is a special case of a rectangle. We come back to this idea when we consider the eccentricity of an ellipse. In the equation of an ellipse, or a circle, the square terms have the same sign. In the four equations considered in our ellipse example video, this sign was positive. It could also be negative. If you have an equation in which both square terms are negative, you can simply multiply the equation on both sides by negative 1 to put it into the more familiar form with both square terms positive. If the coefficients on the square terms are the same, then the ellipse has the same length as height. In other words, it's a circle. If the coefficients on the square term are different, then the length is different from the height, meaning this is a non-circular ellipse. In the equation of a hyperbola, the square terms have opposite signs. You can multiply the equation on both sides by negative 1, but the signs remain opposite of one another. Here are a few examples. In each case, we look for the squares to determine what type of conic section the equation represents. The first equation has only one term involving the square of a variable, minus 4y squared. With one squared term, this equation represents a parabola. The second equation has two terms with squares of variables, negative 2x squared and minus 4y squared. These two square terms have the same sign, both are negative. But the coefficients are different, negative 2 and negative 4. So this is an ellipse. In the third example, we see only one square term, 9x squared. With one squared term, this equation represents a parabola. In the next equation, we see 8x squared and also 8y squared, two squared terms with the same coefficient, same sign and same magnitude. That means this equation represents a circle. Next, we have an equation with 5x squared and minus 5y squared, both fives but opposite signs. When you have two squares with opposite signs, the equation is a hyperbola. Next, we have an equation with no squares at all. This is the equation of a straight line. In the next to last example, we see x squared, which you could think of as 1x squared, and 3y squared, two squared terms with the same sign, both positive, but different coefficients. This equation represents an ellipse. Finally, we have an equation with negative 6x squared and negative 6y squared. Two squares with the same coefficient, negative 6. This equation represents a circle. Once you know which type of conic section your equation represents, you can graph it by completing the square, as shown in the earlier videos in this playlist. Here we consider what eccentricity means in the ellipse. I will draw several ellipses, all with the same center and the same length of string. The ellipses will have different foci, so we can see how the placement of the foci affects the shape of the ellipse. As you remember from a previous video, the length of the string is 2a. This is also the length of the major axis. In this case, the string is 12 inches long, so 2a is 12 inches. All of our ellipses will have major axes that are 12 inches long. Half of this is a, so a is the distance from the center to a vertex at the end of the major axis. In these ellipses, a is 6 inches. The distance from the center to one focus is called c. Eccentricity is c divided by a. Since the foci are always inside the ellipse, 
C is always less than A, so eccentricity is always less than 1. We will start with foci here. These foci are each 5 inches from the center, so C equals 5. We can draw an ellipse using these foci. This ellipse has an eccentricity of 5 sixths, which is about 0.83. Note that the inches in the numerator and in the denominator cancel out, so eccentricity does not have units. Every ellipse with eccentricity 5 sixths has this same shape. For a different shape, we move the foci. Using these foci, the distance C from the center to one focus is 3 inches. Using these foci, we get a different ellipse. Eccentricity is C divided by A, so for this ellipse, eccentricity will be 3 inches over 6 inches, which is 1 half, or 0.5. Notice that the second ellipse with the lower value of E is closer to circular. The higher value of E goes with the ellipse that is narrower. Now we move the foci even closer to the center. Using these foci, the distance C from the center to one focus is one inch. This gives us yet another ellipse. Eccentricity is C divided by A, so for this ellipse, eccentricity will be one inch over six inches, which is about 0.17. Notice that as the eccentricity gets smaller, the ellipse gets closer to circular. Finally, we move the foci all the way to the center, making C equal to zero. This ellipse, of course, is a circle. Eccentricity is C divided by A, so it is zero over six inches, which is zero. An ellipse with an eccentricity of zero is a circle. An ellipse with an eccentricity close to zero is close to circular. As the eccentricity gets closer to 1, the ellipse gets narrower and less circular. The eccentricity can't be exactly 1 or greater than 1, because that would put the foci on the ellipse or outside of the ellipse, and then we wouldn't have an ellipse at all. Next, we consider three hyperbolas. As with the ellipse examples, these all have the same value of A and different values of C. Eccentricity is still C over A. Note that in a hyperbola, C is always greater than A, so eccentricity is always greater than 1. Each hyperbola will have a center at the origin and a major axis that is horizontal. In these examples, A equals 7, so the sides of the central rectangle are 7 spaces to the left and right of the center. For the first hyperbola, C equals 8. The foci are eight spaces to the left and right of the center. To complete the graph, we need the value of b. b squared is c squared minus a squared, so we get 64 minus 49, which is 15. b is the square root of 15, approximately 3.9. The top and bottom of the central rectangle are 3.9 spaces above and below the origin. Once we have the central rectangle, we draw lines through the corners to get the asymptotes. Each branch of the hyperbola touches the center of one side of the rectangle and approaches the asymptotes. The eccentricity is C over A, which is 8 over 7, or about 1.14. In the next example, A is still 7, but now C equals 10. The foci are 10 spaces to the left and right of the center. To complete the graph, we need the value of B. B squared is C squared minus A squared, so we get 100 minus 49, which is 51. B is the square root of 51, approximately 7.14. The top and bottom of the central rectangle are 7.14 spaces above and below the origin. Once we have the central rectangle, we draw lines through the corners to get the asymptotes. Each branch of the hyperbola touches the center of one side of the rectangle, and approaches the asymptotes. The eccentricity is C over A, which is 10 over 7, or about 1.43. In the last example, A remains 7, but C is now 14. The foci are 14 spaces to the left and right of the center. As before, B squared is C squared minus A squared, so we get 196 minus 49, which is 147. B is the square root of 147, approximately 12.12. The top and bottom of the central rectangle are 12.12 spaces 
above and below the origin. Once we have the central rectangle, we draw lines through the corners to get the asymptotes. Each branch of the hyperbola touches the center of one side of the rectangle and approaches the asymptotes. The eccentricity is c over a, which is 14 over 7, or 2. Bringing all of these examples together, we see that the curves where the hyperbola passes through the vertices are tighter for smaller values of e. The branches of the hyperbola straighten out a bit for larger values of e. In summary, a circle has an eccentricity of 0. An ellipse has an eccentricity between 0 and 1. The closer the eccentricity of an ellipse is to 0, the more the ellipse looks like a circle. When the eccentricity is close to 1, the ellipse is long and narrow. A parabola has an eccentricity of exactly 1. Hyperbolas have eccentricity greater than 1. A smaller value of eccentricity close to 1 results in a hyperbola that has very tight curves at the vertices. A larger value of eccentricity produces a hyperbola with branches that look sort of like parallel lines, although they are not perfectly straight. This video concludes our introductory playlist on conic sections. In a later playlist, we will examine conic sections from a different perspective, starting with eccentricity rather than ending with it. That series will be more in keeping with what you might see in a calculus course.